This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a huge game coming up this week in college football with Penn State taking on Ohio State. And yeah, it's a, you know, pretty tight spread there in Ohio State for this game. We're going to break down that game, break down other key games across week eight with Dr. Ed Fang getting his read on this week's games and letting you know where he sees value at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned, by Dr. Ed Fang. Find his work on Twitter at the Power Rank. Check him out at thepowerrank.com. And Ed, thriller of a slate coming up this week with that big game between Penn State and Ohio State. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's actually me a couple week for me because uh, I'm wearing my new Mays Michigan hat because uh-huh. I feel a little bit bad calling them overrated at number two this preseason. Right now they're number one in my college football rankings. That probably has less to do with them. I mean, they've played really well the last three weeks, yeah. and we should give them credit for that. Uh, it also has to do with the fall off of, of other teams. Uh, but, you know, they're number one. And uh, so, so far, that's not looking good. I actually, I, There's a long way to go, and I may turn out to be right that Michigan was yeah. was overrated at number two in the nation. But right now, they look pretty good. So I thought it was a chance to uh, to grab some merch. And uh, and we'll have we'll have a little bit more tomorrow for the NFL show. So obviously, you're there in Ann Arbor. Um, when you're talking to people, like, do they give you, do they let you know that you were a bit too low on them entering the year? Do they like, kind of have you, let you hear it a little bit or no? I think everyone's a little bit cautious at this point in the season. Sure. I think everyone knows that they should be 9 0 heading into yeah. Penn State. And um, Penn State and Ohio State are going to be tough at the end of the year. Uh, no yeah. one's too worried about going up to East Lansing this weekend, as they should not be. But yeah, I, look, we got. Everyone knew we were going to wait till those last three games, and uh, yeah. so there's a lot left to play. So no, 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 no smack talking yet, but there probably will be. So you got the Wolverines playing well. You got the Lions playing well. Yeah, the Detroit Tigers played well down the stretch. At least their pitching was awesome for them. So like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's kind of a good time to be a Michigan sports fan right now. Absolutely. I mean, we're gonna, gonna let the Pistons screw everything up in about a week here, <laughs> but yeah, we'll take what we can get, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I really do. I mean, I actually probably, well, I don't know. The Lions defense pass defense is still pretty pretty bad, but yeah. But they they are pretty good at the one thing that is most sticky in the NFL, and that's throwing the football. Well, and you got the best quarterback in football, Ed. What more could you ask for? I think that's uh, we know why that's happening. I did take the Lions money line this week. We'll talk about that game tomorrow, though. Uh, and I can pick your brain on whether that was a dumb bet or not. We're going to dive into week number eight in college football here in just one second. But first, snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action the app is so easy to use there's a wide range of betting options including spreads player props totals and more so visit fanduel.com and kick off the nfl season fanduel official partner of the nfl must be 21 plus and present in select states fanduel is offering online sports wagering in kansas under an agreement with kansas star casino llc first online real money wager only ten dollar first deposit required bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut. 1-800-9 within Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com again. Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now we're going to talk Ohio State, Penn State here in just one second. But first, Ed, Wanted to talk to you a bit more broadly because it seems like in more recent years, 
there's been a bunch of late week movement in the betting markets where Saturday morning things might move a pretty decent amount, potentially across key numbers. So I wanted to ask you from like your perspective, have you found yourself getting more value on game days than you did in years past? Or should we still have the same respect for the markets, uh, for markets getting more efficient over time as we have in the past? Uh, I, I, I don't bet sides and totals on game day. I don't think that's a good idea. I actually don't really have any experience with it, so I can't say whether you're going to get more value on game day. My suspicion is no, you will not. Uh, I highly recommend betting early in the week. I bust my butt to get my member numbers up on Sunday. So people who are subscribed to my site can get those early numbers. And yeah, I mean, I think I think that is the time to bet. Uh, it's a little bit different with props. Uh, yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of public action on some of these props. Big teams like Michigan, running backs like Blake Quorum. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, if you're betting those on Saturday morning, I think that's great. I, th I think there's probably a lot of value on unders there, uh, letting some of these uh, these props go up, 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 and up, and uh, there, there's potentially some value hitting the under. Yeah, I heard you talking to Rob Pozzola on the Football Analytics Show last week about oh, how yeah. you'll get like some action. You know, there are a lot of spots that can move markets. And if they move it the wrong way or move it too far, you can potentially buy back on the opposing side. So, yeah. like, I think in the prop department, that's a spot where, you know, you'll see these bet these like tw tweets on Twitter about how like, oh, 99% of the bets are on Patrick Mahomes over 291 and a half passing yards, whatever it may be. Oh it's God. like, if that much if that percentage of action is on the over and it, it increases, like there is always gonna be a chance that you're going to get money on or value on the under. So I feel like to me, if you're looking for game day bets unders on a lot of props is probably going to be your best route for doing so. Absolutely. I feel like the NFL prop market is probably getting sharper. So it's less uh, a case where the market is going to be wildly over on someone, but I do think you're going to get that in college football. I remember like I bet under 101 receiving yards on Quentin Johnson in the national championship game, right? Like he had had that just like hugely explosive game against Michigan. I don't know how it moved, but I certainly bet the under, I certainly liked it. And he had three receiving yards against, you know, probably the best defense in college football history. I, I, I do feel like there's going to be a lot of that, you know, like, I remember Rufus Peabody was on my podcast talking about how he bets Super Bowl props. Actually, no, not mine. I heard this on somewhere else. But his tip was like, you know, if you want to bet an under, wait until game day because someone yeah. will probably bet it up for the Super Bowl. I think we'll probably see less of that in the NFL as that market gets sharper. But yeah. I think we're going to see. I think we're, I, I think that is a good strategy for college football. Right, for sure. And you don't have as many, I don't know, sharp spots giving out intelligent bets and stuff like that in college football as you have with the NFL. It's a more saturated market. So I think that right. would make sense for sure. Um, so if you're looking for game day action, check out the prop market and see if there are some spots where the under to you looks pretty attractive. Let's talk now about that big game on Saturday between Penn State and Ohio State right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Ohio State is a four and a half point favor and the total in this game is 45 and a half. And Ed, Defense here could be pretty good. Penn State lights out on defense so far this year, but Ohio State has done the exact same thing. So can Penn State do enough here to keep this game close and potentially cover the four and a half point spread? Yeah, I think they can. I, I mean, this is obviously a, a huge, huge game. And um, there, there's actually some really interesting things going on with explosive plays here. If you think back to last year, Ohio State's defense was really good most of the year. They were actually pretty incredible in the success rate numbers. They got to that Michigan game at the end and gave up a bunch of explosive plays to Michigan and lost. It was a year when you looked at the year, they were, I don't know, I think top 10 when you look at adjusted success rate, but they were maybe in the 60s when you looked at yards per play. It's actually kind of the opposite right now. I have them 19th in defense in success rate and actually first in yards per play. And at this point in the season, we're halfway through the season. Um, I, I just tend to trust the success rate a little bit more. I do not throw out the yards per play because I do feel like there is some signal there. But And, and I think this Ohio State defense is really good. Um I think that was a prior. I think you asked me about that before. I still think they're really good. I mean, I think they're overall probably even better than last year. 
But if you're using yards per play and saying this is the best defense in the nation, I I, I probably think you're wrong about that. Um, so, uh, and then Penn State, uh, they are kind of the exact opposite um, on on offense. Uh, they are six, 15th in success rate and 60th in, in yards per play. So there's been like this huge lack of explosive plays uh, for Penn State. And you can actually kind of narrow it down a little bit more to the run game. Um, Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen, two super talented running backs that that everyone had high expectations coming into the season. Um, they have not; they, they've done really poorly on on the explosive plays. Uh, their their rush offense is thirty first in success rate. That's pretty good. Probably expect even better for Penn State, but it's still pretty good. They're ninety eighth in yards per carry adjusted for opponent. Um, you know, and for example, you know Singleton had six point eight yards per carry last year. 4.1 this season. You know, maybe some of that is the run blocking. Um, PFF has them 48 out of 133 turnings in terms of run block grade. So they could probably do a little bit better, but, and it's hard to say like, Hey, Penn state hasn't made explosive plays. So maybe they'll do some <laughs> against a pretty talented right. Ohio state defense. Um, but I do think the you know Ohio State's defense isn't as good as we think. I think Penn State's offense is a little bit better than we think. My numbers actually really like the over on this. I've been eyeing this all week. I, I don't like even when I saw this initially, I, I I just don't really see like a 25 to 21 game here. I think there's gonna be more points than that. Um I also know that uh, a lot of other sharp people uh do like the under in this game. And I want to respect that. So I will definitely lean over here. Um, it, it, this actually just came down a point uh, mm -hmm. this morning. But I will definitely lean on the over. And then, you know, my model has uh, basically these two teams rated about the same. And it says Ohio State by about a field goal in this game. I do think there's a little bit of value in Penn State. Uh, I think this is an upcoming – I think this is an up, up and coming team. I think this is a high ceiling team. Uh, and by the underlying numbers, they look, you know, pretty good. And with Ohio State, like, I think they're good, but, you know, and I actually like the offense. Um, uh, there's so much to unpack there, too. Like, you know, their offense uh, kind of has been terrible running the ball. And when you dig into uh, why, you know, they're actually third in the nation in PFF run blocking grade. So it all kind of comes down to the running backs and all three of their top running backs are on the injured list when I checked earlier this week. So there's all kinds of stuff going there, but like, I do think they can throw the ball. Uh, obviously the receivers are great. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily like McCord and he's not CJ Stroud, but I think he's pretty good. Uh, I, I think he can lead this offense, but they're also going up against the number one pass defense. When I look at passing success rate adjusted for opponent, I think that all kind of points towards the under for me. Um, and then, yeah, I, I guess with the side, you know, my, my, my model has it. And I feel like, you know, Penn State's kind of done a little bit more to, to make me think that they're going to reach their ceiling. And Ohio State's probably a little bit down from where I expected them. I still think they're a really good team. Uh, I think these are both two really good teams. But, but I would lean Penn, Penn State at uh, plus four and a half. Now, you were talking about how you expect that the Penn State offense is a bit better than we think. You were talking about how uh, the Ohio State defense may not be quite as good as they played. And your overall lean was towards the over in this game. Any interest for you in checking out the Penn State team total? You know, something like that to kind of get a situation where you are potentially taking advantage of the fact that uh, maybe Penn State's a bit sure. undervalued offensively. The Ohio State defense hasn't lost as many explosives. Maybe they should. Uh, right now, the Penn State team total is 20 and a half over is minus 102. Do you think that's a route you would consider as a way yeah. to take advantage of the two assumptions you've discussed? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I do like the idea of, of kind of Ohio State going there under what we expect them as well, uh, given just that Penn State's defense is so much better at protect, uh, defending against the pass than the run. Um, but, you know, for example, let's see. I mean, my model has Penn State with about 27 points. So definitely a lot of value there. Um, I, I think that's probably a good way to bet it as well. Okay, so looking at the markets right now, FanDuel Sportsbook, as mentioned, uh, the team total for Penn State is 20 and a half. Over is minus 102. 
Um, the total for the game is 45 and a half over for that is minus 110. Penn State plus four and a half is also minus 110. The under as you or the total, as you mentioned, did come down. It was 46 and a half. It's now 45 and a half. How far would that need to come down for you to bite and actually lock in the full game over of 40, uh, the full game over? Yeah, I mean, I would keep an eye on the weather. Like the the, the wind is going to be up like 13, 14 miles per hour. So that's a factor too. Um, I don't know how much, like, I mean, I guess if the weather report gets worse, it could come down a little bit. Mm-hmm. I just still think that's just a massively small total. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I would bet it now. I okay. have bet it now. I would bet it now. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of different ways to bet this game, depending on kind of your feel for this one. If you want to take the over, you can. If you want to take Penn State team total, you can. If you want to take Penn State plus the points, you can do that as well. So overall, pretty fun game with a lot of ways to potentially get exposure to it at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's talk about the second game we're going to break down for today. That is Tennessee at Alabama right now. Right now, Alabama, eight and a half point favorites. Total for this one is at 48 and a half. And, and we talked a couple of times about Alabama's struggles this year, but they've managed to get by. And the market seems to reflect their issues where, you know, not heavily favored here against Tennessee team that is, has its flaws. Is this a good buy low spot in your mind for Alabama or is the market properly valuing them where it has this game right now? Yeah, I'm not really sure this is like a buy low spot. Like I would have made this Alabama minus eight and a half this preseason. And I feel like we have kind of downgraded Alabama quite a bit, right? Uh, The offense is really not what we have expected. They are... um, is 45th when I look at adjusted success rate. They've kind of been feasting on big plays as well. Noah has been able to, to pop a couple big ones. He did last week against Arkansas. The defense has been amazing, so so that's obviously pretty good. But like I feel like we have had a kind of significant downgrade on Alabama. And for Tennessee, you know, uh, the offense has been really disappointing. Um, they're out of the top 25 in a lot of my metrics. Joe Milton's been in disappointing uh the pass offense based on my justice success rate they're like close to average they're about 58th so that's been bad but the defense is uh, the run game has been good um and the defense has been really good they're fifth in my adjusted success rate so we're really kind of disappointed in tennessee's offense but the defense has kind of made up for it i feel like they've been ground downgraded less and i feel like that's legit so you know, my model has Alabama by six and a half here. Uh, I think there's a little bit of value. I would definitely lean towards Tennessee if you're if you're going to bet this at plus uh, eight and a half. It was plus nine and a half uh, on Sunday, so I do feel it's like it's coming down. I still feel like there's a little bit of value on Tennessee. The plus eight and a half is currently minus one fifteen at FanDuel Sportsbook. Is that enough where it makes it more so a lean for you versus a full thing you'd want to bet personally? Yeah, no, I definitely think it's a lean. Um, yeah. I think I think we should still respect Alabama, um, but I don't know. I mean, we talked about last week, weren't they like fifty-one to win the national title? I feel like other yeah. parts of the market are not respecting Alabama. I, I would right. lean that way, right? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. I would, I, I would kind of lean that way as opposed to thinking they're they're going to come back and and uh, and and win the SEC. Okay, let's finish up here by talking about Duke at Florida State and. This is a pretty fun game, too. Uh, right now, Market at FanDuel Sportsbook has, uh, scrolling down here, they've got Duke, or uh, Florida State has 13 and a half point favorites. Total in this game is 48 and a half right now. And Florida State obviously got that big win over LSU in the season opener. But since then, Ed, not the toughest level of competition. So can they cover a nearly two touchdown spread here, taking on a very respectable Duke team? Yeah, uh, I think that kind of depends on who's playing quarterback for Duke. Um, so Florida State, you know, as you mentioned, had a really good performance against LSU. Uh, that performance against LSU's defense looks a lot worse <laughs> than it did to open up the season because that side of the football has been terrible for them. Florida State was lucky to beat Clemson. A lot of the metrics favored Clemson in that game. And uh, Florida State's defense kind of had a big whiff against Boston College, but but otherwise Florida State's been 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 really good. I think what's interesting is on the other side of the ball. So Riley Leonard didn't play for Duke last week against NC State. They won twenty four to three, which seems great, um, but it was really reliant on explosive plays. Uh, there was a long touchdown run. There was a long uh, pass. Uh, there was a long passing touchdown as well, and. 
you know, Leonard's backup was four for 12 for 107 yards. And a lot of those 107 came on one play. So, um, yeah, look, if, if, I, I think this is a pass for me if Riley Leonard comes back and play. I think he's questionable. Uh, if the backup plays, I would I would definitely lean towards Florida State. They they do like look like one of the best teams in the nation. Uh, if they're playing against a backup that was only able to generate one explosive play in the passing game uh, last week against N- NC State, uh, I would go with Florida State. And we all, all often talk about the difference in college where – a quarterback may not move the spread as much as it would in the NFL, but with Riley Leonard, who has gotten like legitimate, like first round NFL draft buzz, that's a very different situation. Uh, most recent update in Leonard uh, from head coach, Mike Elko said that there was a chance that he plays and that could be gamesmanship. But to me saying a chance is not the most optimistic outlook. So I would be a bit worried about him being able to go for this game. And like you said, if it's not Leonard, that's a pretty significant downgrade for Duke. Yeah. So. If you want to bet Duke, I would not be doing it now until we have more clarity there. Yeah, I mean, if he if he seems doubtful, Florida State less than two touchdowns seems pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, any other spots where you see value for this weekend? Yeah, so I kind of want to talk about the the prop market because yeah. I think it's interesting in in college football. Um, so I tried a middle Blake Quorum last week simply because <laughs> there was there was quite a spread. Uh, this was a couple hours before the game, and DraftKings had him at 99 and a half. And 99 and a half is just a large number, no matter how talented the player it is, right? Uh, Blake Quorum is talented enough to make you look silly. Um, and but you know, FanDuel had it at I don't know 90. So there was a pretty big middle there. And then I, I got the under at DraftKings and FanDuel had moved to 94. It's like, well, we'll try it anyway. <laughs> Didn't work out. He had he 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 went well under that. Um, but it is something that, you know, I think I think the under in general is the is the way to go. But um so, anyways, this week I've already bet his over at DraftKings. I think we got a, a 85-ish. And then on, sorry, the over at FanDuel and then DraftKings was 95, but they wouldn't let me bet anything on it. So I'm waiting closer to game day. Hope that gets closer to 100. So, you know, like a 15 yard. I mean, again, it's it's like kind of the principle that like, if you want to bet an over, do it earlier in the week. Because I right. do think it might go up on FanDuel. And then, dang, it already went up. Yeah, it's already 88 and a half. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, I, I I did this literally like an hour ago. Right. Um, and then, <laughs> well, and, and then, there might be some correlation is causation in the situation. I, I don't know. I didn't really bet that much. I don't think it was me. Anyway. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this is going to go up. I think it's going to go up on DraftKings. Uh, last week, they let me bet at least not an embarrassing amount. <laughs> yeah. Last week, right? Like right before the game. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. And um yeah, I think I'm definitely going to try to use this space uh, when you ask me about other markets to to yeah. look into the prop market. Uh, as mentioned before, I do think there's going to be some value in just looking at the market and trying to bet unders, trying to look at guys who have had some explosive plays, explosive games in the previous couple of weeks, facing maybe a better defense and trying to bet the under. And look, if you have a receiver or a running back whose prop is in the hundreds, like you can probably you can probably bet the under and be profitable in general. Right. Um, the one issue that I've always had with these is I can find line shopping tools with this like in seconds for the NFL. Uh, you know, it's where I see every mm-hmm. single um, Austin Eckler rushing plus receiving market at every single legal book in one place. Do okay. you have a similar tool in college football that you've been using to kind of line shop quickly, or is it more so kind of knowing which guys you want to look for and then kind of, you know, self-checking by hand each, each book that you can have access to in Michigan? Yeah. I mean, a couple of answers to that, like when I'm doing props, like for my newsletter, for my members, like NFL interception props, like, I mean, DK always has the best price, right? So I'm usually kind of just checking a, Actually, I'm mostly checking there because yeah, it's I mean it's almost it's almost certain <laughs> that they're gonna have the best price. Um, but I do use unabated for kind of comparing props in the NFL 
I think I'm I'm positive. I'm pretty sure from the NFL that it's op- available for free. They also have the same service for college. I'm not sure if it's free, but but it's there and, and yeah. it's useful. Yeah. And it actually enlightened me that some books actually put up uh, uh, interception props in college. Oh. I, I don't think it was a lot of books, but I think one of them had it. So, um, yeah, definitely check out everything over at Unabated. They, they, they might have a pretty good tool for that. Uh, it may be a paid service. I'm not actually sure. Okay, so check out the Blake Corum number. See where it's at when we get to game day. 88 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, do you still like the over at 88 and a half, or is that too high for you now? I mean, in general, I like the under. Uh, yeah. Any number getting into the 90s. Again, this is like a kind of thing where you can look really dumb betting the under on a talented guy like Blake Corum. Right. I'll try to say that a third time before the show ends. <laughs> um uh, we but, will clip this part. If we do clip it, we'll, we'll make sure to include that part in there just to just to cover your bases for you. But I, do, I, I, uh, but I do feel like when I was at eighty five, like yeah, I think the possibility of at fourteen yards and trying to mill it is uh, is kind of fun. So yeah, I think um, the overall philosophy of overs early, unders late makes a lot of sense. You can get spots where you can get like a fourteen yard middle, like you said. I think that's pretty attractive overall. All righty. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Ed, if people are looking for uh, your newsletter you were talking about before with uh, mailing out props and stuff for like that, where can they find that? Yeah, you can get my newsletter at thepowerrank.com. Uh, Five Nuggets Saturday. I put uh, some of my NFL interception props in there, which I've been doing really well this year. I also try to find bets from from other sharp people most of football this time of year. And then the football analytics show is my podcast. This week is a solo episode with just me talking about um, success rate versus yards for play insights. We can get for different teams. I talked about a little bit of the stuff with Penn state. I go into a little more depth in the episode. Also talk about USC and Oregon, which I think are two uh, fascinating teams heading down the stretch. Everyone thinks Lincoln Riley is, is in crisis over there. Uh, I kind of disagree. So um, that should be up. It's not up right now, but it should be up uh, by Wednesday night. All right. Find that at thepowerrank.com to check out that and the football analytics show to get the podcast as well. Ed is on Twitter at the power rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. I'm also on threads. I'll throw that out there too. Why not? At Jim dot We'll just do it. I don't care. Whatever. I'm still? there. Yeah, they, they got a desktop version now. So I, as the old person with fat thumbs who can't type, uh, I'm finally using it now because I have desktops. So, you know, Instagram used to just be like dog pics for me. Um, I guess I have to like actually use it professionally now, which is upsetting. I'm just very upset about the entire thing, honestly. Well, you have to use Instagram professionally. Yeah, like if Twitter is going to burn, it's not going to like it's not going to go totally downhill. But like, you know. I got to hedge a little bit, Ed. We know, you know, a thing, we know a thing or two about hedging. It applies to other stuff too, apparently. True. It's That's unfortunate. True. But yeah, if you're on threads, I'm there at Jim Totsonis. We'll talk to y'all <laughs> once again tomorrow to break down NFL week number seven. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> <laughs>